Hi, I'm Reeve from mummyof4.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing my five top tips for keeping your home clean and tidy as a busy mum. Now this is actually a collaboration video forming 10 top tips and the other five are from Vicky over at The Mummy Bubble. Vicky is a mum of two as well as a vlogger, a blogger and a freelance journalist. She is fantastic. She does loads of speed cleans, shops with me in hauls, tips and tricks, all that kind of stuff. If you like my channel, you will love hers. I shall link it below. Make sure that you go and subscribe to her channel and check out her video, which is the other five tips, which I shall also link below. And you can go and check those out after you've watched this video. And before we dive into the tips, do not forget that if you're new here, you know, welcome. Please subscribe to my channel as well. Hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 7 p.m. I do loads of cleaning, tips, tricks, hacks, and advice parenting tips, speed cleans, shop with me's haul. If you're over here from Vicky's channel and you like her channel, I'm sure you'll enjoy my content too. My first tip is to get your whole family involved in the cleaning and the housework. Now, this will make your children realize from a very young age that this stuff does not happen by magic. Fairies do not come and do it for them. And as they grow up, they'll realize that it's just quite normal for everyone to muck in and do their own little bit and not just chuck the stuff on the floor and expect someone else to pick up after them. Obviously, this needs to be an age appropriate way of doing it. So my two year old will already put her own stuff in the laundry basket and she will help me clear away her toys. She's not very good at it, but you know, it's just the kind of the effort of, come on, let's all do this together. And she knows that's what's expected of her. My four year old, she does a little bit more tidying up of her own things. My seven year old, is capable of putting away all his own laundry when that is given to him. The girls, I do get them to help me do their laundry, but they do need, you know, it's mostly me and they're just helping. But my seven year old can do all of that himself. I give, her that, give him his stuff and he'll put that away himself. And then my 15 year old does a lot more chores around the house and he gets pocket money depending on how much he has done that week. I do find that the younger you start them, the more likely they are to just accept it. My two year old who has sort of been mucking in and helping me for as long as she can kind of walk, really enjoys kind of cleaning. She's like, yay, mummy, can we do cleaning together? The younger you start them, the easier they're going to find it, the more they just accept it and enjoy kind of mucking in and doing their little bit. You really can make cleaning a little bit of a game with your children. It doesn't have to be like a really horrible chore. I find it's quite helpful if we kind of go, we all wanna go to soft play, right. We will set a timer, we will do 20 minutes of running around and tidying up the playroom and getting as much as we can done. Let's have a race and if we can get it all done by the end of the 20 minutes, we can all go to soft play together because otherwise we're not gonna be able to go because mummy's gonna have to stay and do it all herself and you're gonna have to stay too and no one can go to soft play and that's no fun because mummy's gonna have to spend all this time doing it by herself. And without a shadow of a doubt, my children will always say, yeah, come on then, let's do it because they know there's an incentive at the end of it. We can make it into a game, we put music on, we jump around, we make it into a race, we race against the clock, anything you can do to make it more of a game, to make it kind of more inclusive, just to get everybody involved. My next tip is to think about kid friendly cleaning supplies. Now, obviously there are certain chemicals and things that are not safe to use around children and those are only for use when you're kind of cleaning when your children are not around you. But if you are gonna get your children to kind of muck in, then you're going to need to think about these kids safe cleaning supplies and think jobs that you can do while your children are around. Even if your children are too small to be helping out or they're not helping out at the time, you need to think about which kind of cleaning you can do around your children when they are awake and you haven't got anywhere else to watch them for you. So for example, while your children are in the bath, you can't exactly use harsh bathroom cleaning chemicals, but you can use like a minky or a scrub buddy and just wipe around the sinks and things. And you can do that without any chemicals at all as like a sort of an interim clean and that will stay on top of your bathroom. My next tip is to put together a set of cleaning essentials that are kid friendly. So this kid friendly kit can be used when you want your children to join in with you and you want them to help you to clean, or it could be things that you will use that are kind of safe to use around children when you haven't got anyone else to watch your children, they're awake and they're with you and they have to be in the same room as you when you're cleaning. For example, the fluffy dusters are great to hand to your toddler and they um, will 
clean around with you. Now, my toddler loves her, she thinks it's a toy, she mostly cleans the carpet with it, it's not helpful at all, but it means she's happy, it means I can get on with cleaning. The other sort of things that you can put in your kid-friendly cleaning kit would be things like a minky or a scrub buddy, and if you leave those sort of in the bathroom, for example, when your children are having a bath and you can kind of still keep an eye on them and wipe around the sink and things without any chemicals, so they're not inhaling anything nasty, and you can do sort of an interim clean, those kind of little moments where you can use things that are safe to use around children will really help you keep on top of your house. My next tip is to start every single day by putting on some laundry because this is an instant win in the morning. It doesn't take that long to throw some things in the machine and bang it on instantly like I have done something, check, it is ticked off your list. While you're doing the school run, while you're seeing to the children, the laundry is happening, it is washing, you are doing housework without having to do any at all. But if you do not start every day with a load of laundry, it will soon build up and then you are in kind of nightmare stage where you're surrounded with so much washing and you don't know where to turn. So if you start every single day without fail with a load of laundry, it will help you stay on top of it. My next tip is to identify your dumping areas, your clutter hotspots, and create a bit of a system. So for me, it was laundry, I've talked about this in previous videos, clean, unsorted laundry used to be kind of a problem area for us. So what I did, we developed kind of a new laundry system. So rather than what we used to do, which is bring up all the clean, dry laundry ready to sort and put it in the corner of my bedroom, which was just a massive, massive mess. And then we used to sort it all out together as a family. I used to call it a laundry party. Children would put on music and we'd put it all away and that was great. But the problem with this is in the meantime, I just had all this clean and sorted washing clutching up my bedroom and it was driving me insane. So what we did is we put some Calyx units into our laundry room and now as I take everything out of the dryer, it gets sorted immediately into a box. Each person in the family has a box, plus they have one for towels and one for cloth nappies. As things come out of the dryer, they get sorted directly into those boxes and once those boxes are full, they get given to the person that the stuff belongs to and that person puts their own things away. So the girls have a bit of help, but my older two sons or even my husband, he started doing his own pants and socks now, just since we've done this system. Wow. So each person is given their own stuff and that stuff is put away. It does stop this kind of build up of all this clean and sorted laundry. It makes it much, much easier to do just as it comes out of the dryer. So for us, that was kind of a hot spot. By identifying where clutter builds up, you can come up with a system. Another problem we used to have was by the front door. We had bags and coats and everything dumped. So what we did was we put up a shoe rack and coat hooks in the downstairs loo near the front door because I was sick of shoes being all over the hall. And then we put another little Calyx unit, yes I do love my Calyx, by the front door as like a school bag station and each of the children have a box of their own to put their own things in and they are kind of tidied away. They know where everything is, they're not hunting over the house for their bags and things because they are in their box ready to go for the morning, but at least that kind of clutter hotspot was given a storage solution. My next tip is to count your wins and avoid the comparison trap. It's so easy to look at all these perfect homes on Instagram and think, oh, why is my house such a mess? Why doesn't my house look like that? Why can't I stay on top of these things? But realistically, those people may have help, they may have cleaners, they may have less children than you, they may work less hours than you. You do not know what's going on in someone else's life and it's so hard and unfair on you to compare yourself to these other apparently perfect people. What you do need to do is to count your wins. So if you've managed to do a load of laundry in the day, then yay, good on you, well done. Take it off your list. If it's not on your to-do list, stick it on your to-do list, just as at the, in the Mrs. Hinch activity journal, actually, which I shall link up here, my review to that. Mrs. Hinch talks about a to-da list, which is not just a to-do list, but it's things like, actually, you write things on the list that you have done, and you have the joy of ticking them off. So even if laundry is just one of those things you do, and you've never written it on a to-do list, 
put it on your to-da list and take it off. And then by the end of the day, you can see actually all the things you've done. So you can think, I feel like I haven't done anything today, but I have done laundry, I have made dinner, I have cleaned up after dinner. There's all these things I have done and I have achieved. And you need to give yourself credit for that. Quite frankly, you need to give yourself credit if your children are fed and warm and reasonably happy you need to give yourself credit for that because i don't think as mums we get enough credit for that so i hope you found these tips helpful do not forget to head over to vicky's video which i shall link below to watch her five tips that go with mine if you have liked this video please give it a massive thumbs up do not forget to subscribe hit the bell to be notified when i post new videos every tuesday thursday and sunday at 7 p.m if you would like to watch my latest video it's just across here if you would like to watch more cleaning uh speed cleaning tips decluttering that kind of stuff they're just are down here i'll see you guys so soon bye bye